Today I'm going to tell you the five takeaways from Oklahoma's 49 to 21 molly whopping of UCLA. And all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you're not subscribed to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. So we're going to get into the five takeaways I have from Oklahoma versus UCLA. Yes, Rodney Anderson and what I think is on tap, especially after what Lincoln had to say. But first, there are a lot of accolades to be handed out for Oklahoma, starting at quarterback, where Oklahoma's Kyler Murray completed 19 of 33 passes for 306 yards with three TDs and one interception. I'm gonna give Kyler Murray an A- minus for that pick because it's really on him. He needs to put that ball further down the field and only where Hollywood Brown could catch it. Outside of that, it's hard to fault a guy who passed for 300 yards and rushed for 69 and had five total TDs in a destruction of the UCLA Bruins. At running back, Trey Sermon did his best to take over for Rodney Anderson, who left the game due to injury. Marcellus Sutton had an 11-yard touchdown, an average better than six yards a carry, and TJ Pledger had seven rushes for 45 yards in garbage time. But there was nothing really outstanding about the run game, even going for 179 yards on the ground gotta give them a B. At fullback and tight end, Grant Calcaterra did his job, which is what you want that guy to do more often than not, with the third most catches on the team, three for 26 yards, and I saw no blunders by fullbacks Jeremiah Hall or Carson Meyer, gonna give those guys a B as well. The wide receiver group was buoyed by Hollywood Brown and C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb must be the player of the game, seven catches for 146 yards, while Hollywood Brown added 88 yards on four catches. Gotta give those guys the A+. The offensive line kept their quarterbacks clean for the entire length of the game, giving up zero sacks. Now, the Houdini act of Kyler Murray helped them out, but that guy has to have time to see and to act. They had a 300-yard passer and led the OU run game to 179 yards to the ground. Gonna give them an A. The defensive line again stood out. Neville Gallimore had eight tackles. Ronnie Perkins had a sack. Kenneth Mann continues to hold down that defensive end position, and Mark Jackson coming off the edge had a team high 10 tackles. Gotta give the defensive line an A as well. As for the linebacking core, both Kenneth Murray Jr. and Curtis Bolton played their parts to near perfection and were helped by Ryan Jones on the edge, who was particularly great against the option game. Gonna give those guys an A-. The defensive backs didn't have a pick this game. Khalil Halton got burnt by Caleb Wilson. Justin Broyles looked good at the safety position. But if not for Trey Brown and Trey Norwood, these guys would be trending solidly in the C-plus direction. But because of those guys, gotta give them the B. And special teams for a second straight week gets an A. I mean, look. You had a punt return go for 66 yards. You had a kickoff return go for 86 yards nearly to the house. All three phases of Oklahoma look good against UCLA. That is my report card. <laughs> Let's start with facts only. The first one I think you need to know is Oklahoma's 28-point margin of victory is its largest against a Power 5 opponent in a regular season non-conference matchup. Since defeating Florida State, 47 to 17. Y'all remember this was back in 2010. And while Florida State fans would love to forget it, we will never let you. Same goes for you, Aggies fans, because guess who was the head coach when Oklahoma dropped 47 on the Knowles? Yeah, it'd be your guy, Jimbo. Who, by the way, looked like he'd just come from the gym listening to Run DMC in that jumpsuit. I swear he took off that rope chain before he came on College Game Day set. The second fact you need to know is that Oklahoma handed Chip Kelly his worst loss as a college head coach. His previous worst loss before taking the L to Oklahoma as UCLA's head coach was a 40-27 to drubbing by LSU in 2011. Oklahoma stays peeling caps. Now, as for the game itself, there were plays all over the field. Big plays in the special teams and big plays in the passing game. Kyler Murray was superlative, even with the pick, which we'll talk about here in a second. But you need to know, this was Kyler Murray's first 300-yard passing game in college. Something he didn't do at A&M and something he's done in only his third start at Oklahoma. He was 19 of 33 for 306 yards with three TDs and one pick which was underthrown and is giving more credence to this idea, this theory that Kyler Murray just doesn't throw a hard football, just doesn't throw it very far. But what he could do 
was pull up to a payphone, take out a roll of coins, and drop dime after dime after dime to go along with 10 carries for 69 yards with two TDs. That's five total touchdowns. Kyler Murray had himself a ball. But the only guy that had more of a ball was CeeDee Lamb who showed up two ball. Which gets me to my second takeaway, which is receivers be good at Oklahoma. Be real good. Last week, it was Marquise Brown against Florida Atlantic going for 133 yards and a touchdown on six catches, one of which went for 65 yards. This week, it was CeeDee Lamb, who from the moment he first put his hands on the football, started showing out. His first catch was a one-handed gram he made off of his back shoulder while running away from it. And that set off an avalanche of seven catches for 146 yards, including one beautiful 45-yard touchdown score where he split two defenders and came down with the rock. But the best catch he made all day was one that didn't get recorded, not in the stat books. If you watched the game, you saw what looked like Kyler Murray throwing the ball away. And all C.D. Lamb did was jump four feet in the air and one-handed out of the air. We're still not sure that it wasn't a catch. It was called incomplete. But replay shows it was not definitive that he didn't come down with that ball inbounds. Shout out to CeeDee Lamb, who stays showing out. And we saw what we have been waiting to see from him in the punt return game with a 66-yard punt return, where if he didn't look back, he probably goes to the house for another touchdown. Add to this, Marquise Brown didn't exactly just fade away. He had four catches for 88 yards, including one that went for 58 yards and a touchdown. The third thing we take away from Oklahoma destroying UCLA is that the defense was special against a bad team. Oklahoma had another solid game, if not a superlative game, an awesome game, an outstanding game, a memorable game in which they sacked the quarterback six times and had 12 tackles for loss. Jack linebacker Mark Jackson showed out with 10 tackles and a sack, while linebacker Kenneth Murray had nine tackles. Curtis Bolton showed up to continue to show why he won that starting job at the will linebacker position. Ryan Jones continues to show out at the Sam linebacker spot. Justin Burroughs came in and got his first start at safety, and he looked the part, while Neville Gallimore had eight tackles from the nose tackle position, which is not a position where you expect a guy to get the kind of tackles or have the kind of performance that Neville Gallimore has had in back-to-back -back weeks. It's becoming clear that something has flipped off of Neville Gallimore, but there's a caveat, there's an asterisk with both of these performances in that Florida Atlantic wasn't as good as we thought they would be. Although I still think they'll be pretty good. And UCLA is a flat bad football team who started a true freshman quarterback who probably doesn't know his booty from his elbow at this point because his head was twisted around and he spent a lot of time on the ground. Even David Carr was watching Dorian Thompson Robinson get hit going, yikes. Outside of that, the defense looked good. I just want the defense to show what they can do against a good football team. And it feels like they'll have that opportunity against Iowa State next Saturday. Perhaps by then, Mike Stoops will have cleaned up plays like Caleb Wilson styling on Khalil Houghton for 65 yards with the stiff arm. And will no longer have Mark Jackson dropping back into coverage. Mark Jackson's outstanding at his job, which is rushing off the edge and making tackles. Let him do that. My fourth takeaway from Oklahoma versus UCLA in the 49-21 thumping is Beamer Ball seems to be here to stay. This is a back-to-back -back week, but again, is Beamer Ball has shown up for a consecutive week. Now the same rules apply with the special teams that apply for the defense. And why not the offense? Because the offense has shown what they can do for three seasons under Lincoln Riley. They have earned the opportunity to say, it doesn't matter if it's Florida Atlantic or Georgia, we're going to put up points. You cannot say that about the defense or special teams, which hadn't been a factor since Alex Ross was returning kicks. And in back-to-back -back weeks, we've seen big plays in the special teams. Last week, it was Lee Morris and his punt block. This week, it was Trey Brown nearly taking one to the house and again, C.D. Lamb with his 66-yard punt return. As for Trey Brown, there's this interesting fact. His 86-yard kickoff return was OU's longest non-scoring return in stadium history. I kind of wish he didn't have that record because I wanted him to go for six. But that's still impressive when you consider that there was a guy like Antonio Perkins that had a lot of opportunities to do that. Just Antonio Perkins seemed to get to the house or not make it that far. Same can be said for Alex Ross, and we could go on. Shout out to JT Thatcher. And my last takeaway from Oklahoma's 49-21 to 21 destruction of UCLA, beat them like they stole something, beat them like they owed OU money, reloaded these Henry Cavills, took out the 55-gallon drum of kick butt, and poured it all on UCLA. His injuries suck. 
man. Injuries are the worst. Robert Barnes was in street clothes. Marquise Overton wasn't there. Austin Kendall was in street clothes. And of course, we all saw Rodney Anderson walk to the locker room and come back in a huge knee brace with no definitive word on the injury or what it means for Rodney Anderson's season, let alone his career. Lincoln Riley did talk about Rodney Anderson's injury briefly in the postgame. I'm sure there'll be more said on Monday at the presser, but what he did say was we'll see on Rodney, and that he doesn't know anything definitive, but he hopes for the best, and they'll get an official word on it and see where they're at. But he also added, the offense does not drastically change because Rodney is hurt, Trey Sermon, Marcellus Sutton, TJ Pledger, Kennedy Brooks all can do the kinds of things that Rodney Anderson can do. It's just they don't do them as well as Rodney Anderson. And bear in mind, Trey Sermon was ahead of Rodney Anderson on the depth chart at this time last year. So it may be time for the preacher man to come on. Should also note that TJ Pledger had seven carries, 45 yards in garbage time, and that the trio of Sutton, Pledger, and Sermon had 91 yards on 21 carries. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.